Hello everyone, thanks for joining my home studio where I share my passion for watercolor painting. This week we are going to learn how to do a watercolor landscape. This painting is done from a place called Baclar, Mexico and um, this town is especially called Cowtown because there's a lot of cows in this town. And I really like this reference because they used a, a lot of salvage metal plates to create this barn. And it is a complex reference but in this video I showed how to simplify your reference and capture the essence of light and shadows to tell a story of that reference. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. So before um, I start any watercolor painting, I usually start with uh, a light sketch because which is gonna show where everything goes. And um, one thing I also establish in my sketching phase is my composition. So I had a vision of this painting of my reference is my focal point is the house. I want to make sure that I make that house a little bit bigger in my composition than the rest of my painting. So I want to make sure to capture the essence of it and the rest will be act as a backdrop or elements for us. So once I'm happy with it, I'll start with the sky and I used cobalt blue and I'm bringing all the way to the bottom. So whenever you do watercolors, the background, the sky, you have to make it as simple as possible. And there's also some mistake I did, but eventually I'm not worried about it. I went with my flow and I'm keep going. And you can see I started with uh, the horizon, which is the background. I'm using a little bit of green in it and I'm using a lot of uh, um, cadmium yellow in it. So I want to create a glow in the mid -ground, but as soon as it comes to the foreground, it's going to be vibrant. So that's how reality works and um, in my reference if you see everything looks crisp. So if you're in that place and if you look this landscape and there's a little bit of atmosphere and you will, sh you will see that glow and it will show um, there is a little bit of perspective and depth happening in our reference. So whenever we take picture in, uh, in a camera, we try to capture everything in our camera and it also gives this crisp, you know, darker value in our picture. So. That's how it's really nice to go out and um, learn Mother Nature so you can learn how to create depth and atmosphere from Mother Nature. So I'll persevere and I'll uh, go with my vision. So the first wash for the house, I'm squinting my eyes and wherever I see uh, cool or warmer colors, I'm just throwing it down. This is just to kill the whiteness of the paper. I'm not thinking about anything else. And there is also a house which is also uh, behind the the foreground house so i will keep that minimal because i want to make sure that i'm giving more importance to the foreground than the rest of the painting and uh, there's one thing um, a lot of bigness and a lot of people start with watercolors um, they kind of have this um, problem of um, being true to a reference so i always say this in every painting i do uh, just to say that you know in order to build confidence you don't have to be paint as exactly from your reference so it's your painting so express as you uh, know as you want it and enjoy the process of painting and you can see i started the background uh, the trees and i kept it as a single shape as possible not even thinking about it not even thinking about each and every individual trees out there and you can see i put down the wash uh, of the tree and i also blocked it as fast as i can before it dries out, I'm going to put some uh, a cobalt blue uh, for the shadows because I did the exact same thing for the foreground as well. And I also did another wash for the mid on the foreground. So the first wash, how I did it, that's the exact way I did it as well. So, but just mixing a little bit of colors of um, a warmish green to a darkish green to the foreground. So it kind of creates this a little, little bit of uh, uh, value from uh, lighter to darker to the mid -ground. So I'll start with the mid-ground house. I want to make sure that try to capture the light and shadow as fast as I can. So the first uh, thing whenever I paint, I'll think about uh, the light and shadow as well as trying to capture the big major shapes for my reference. So if I squint my eyes, the darker parts are the top parts. And I'm also trying to add those, um, those metal plates at the top as well. And you can see um, I'm trying to block the shadow uh, of the so of the house right away without even thinking about it because I know that um, the blue which I put in for the first wash it worked quite nice so it acts as a light 
So now we are adding the second layer on top of it to create that lighting and shadow. And you can see as soon as some, we add the light and shadow on the plane which is facing the light, we can already see the house taking shapes. So there is a lot of details on the house and I also simplified in such a way that it's easy for me to paint. And you can see I'm trying to add the shadows um, as fast as I can. And I'm trying to add the secondary um, details for uh, secondary wash for the house which is facing uh, the camera. So again, uh, I'm not trying to be as accurate as in the reference. I'm trying to capture whatever colors I see, I'm trying to put it. So the one trick that helps me to simplify seeing colors in my reference is to think everything in warm or cool colors. So the cool colors are which will be sitting on the cool spectrum. So a lot of blues, green, and a lot of pale yellows. And if it's warmer, it will be thinking about sun. It will be yellow, yellow ochre, red, and all other things. And you can see, I'm trying to uh, squint my eyes and try to capture the lighting and shadows um, from the reference. And you can see in a matter of second, I should be able to uh, just to paint the light and shadows. I'm not trying to add the details which is inside those metal plates. And it will come after once I am happy with the light and shadow and uh, doing the second wash of it. And you can see I started layering the, uh, the secondary a little bit of a darker tone. As soon as we add, you can see the difference between there are a lot of different parts of uh, metal parts appearing in our scene. So now I'll add the shadow of the metal pad, so which is sitting at the top. So when you add the shadows, look at the reference, analyze it, um, the shape. Um, because when I start painting and uh, even um, sometimes I get a little bit lazy not to look at the reference because sometimes we try to paint from our head. And because we see these objects every day, so a lot of beginners also have this issue or a lot of students I see they try to paint from their head. They think that they have seen this object before because we see these things every day. So we kind of have this uh, memory and we'll try to paint from it. So the one thing you have to keep in mind that look at your reference and squint your eyes and try to analyze that, identify what shape is it and try to translate in your watercolor paper. And it doesn't have to be 100% accurate and maybe get close to 60 or 70% and that will give that photorealism in your work as well. And I'm also trying to paint as impressionist as possible, but nowadays I'm trying to put a little bit of details in my work um, because I want to make sure that I'm able to capture my focal point um, as promising it can be. Because I want to, I like being capturing what I see. Um, that's all I, uh, that's how I really, as an artist, I really enjoy the thing, like capturing what I see. And we also want to make sure that not copying as it is because um, um, if you want to capture as it is, you can take a picture and you can just hang it in your wall. But we also want to make sure that we study the reference. So next time when we paint, we can try to um, learn what we learned from um, this painting and we can also apply another painting as well. So now um, I'm adding those um, the, the entrance um, wooden, uh, the wooden door or the entrance door. And um, this is what, um, the one mistake I did is, um, um, is like you can see the wooden door in the, the wooden entrance, um, I didn't capture properly in my drawing. So that's why I said it is really essential to capture and true to your reference because um, you can have a bad painting, you can have a bad drawing. You should make sure that um, your perspective is right and um, you are close to your reference as, as much as you can. But I can get away with it in this painting because our focal point is our house. So I want to make sure that I'll put a lot of details in my house. And that way I can get away with that uh, error in my drawing. But I'll keep, um, I'll, keep, uh, I'll keep pursuing it till I see the end results. And there are times um, I stuck in uh, somewhere like this before uh, two or three years ago. If I would have been in this situation, I would have stopped the painting. I would have not continued it. I would think, oh, I made a mistake. I don't want to pursue it anymore. But in, in later years, I realized that whenever I think that I'm losing a painting, I keep uh, painting till the end and see how my painting looks like. 
and eventually there is something happened uh, in my work is um, whenever I did that at the end like the painting looked uh, really nice so now I'm adding the the, uh, the secondary darker tone the secondary tones and you can see once we add those darker tones on this metal plates you can see that there is separation happening between those colors this is what um, another thing um, a lot of uh, watercolorists are good at uh, is layering so you should know how to layer your watercolor uh, you should start with the lightest wash as possible and you go to the mid tones the darker tones and the darkest tones because in watercolors if you have a darker value it's really hard to go on a lighter value because that's how watercolor works watercolor is not a forgiving medium because it gives the results right away so you have to make sure that you wait for the darker tone till the end and you can see by now you know the painting looked already good you know we i tried to capture just the light and shadow and separating those metal plates and we already finished the painting and i also added the shadows for um, the entrance door and i'm also trying to leave some uh, break the darker shape at the bottom of the house to give the illusion of grass growing up so in the mid ground i also want to have some uh, little bit of details because i don't want to be uh, really weak and there's also a brown patch which is in the sitting in the mid crown because that's where uh, the cows are um, placed there so i want to make sure to capture that so this is the a part i wait till the end uh, this is like adding eyelids so this thing is really important because sometimes what happens is when you paint them um, it's really hard to leave eyelids especially if you're painting a smaller painting so this is my uh, this is a 9 by 12 painting so it is really hard to leave some eyelets and plan your um, white bits before you paint it um, if i would have painted this in a bigger scale um, i would have planned my um, white layers and leaving white as a paper and um, for for the eyelets i usually use um, uh, gouache sometimes and sometimes chinese white but when you're adding eyelets try not to uh, overdo it and you can see I'm, I'm just trying to um, grab the essence from it and I always tape my painting just to have the crisp uh, lines um, in the borders and um, I think I captured the essence of the scene really well and it also came out rather nice and um, now it's your turn um, take my reference or one of my reference and um, try to capture the light and shadows and not to focus on the details in your reference Thanks again for watching this um, watercolor landscape painting tutorial with me. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section below. If you have any other questions or subjects you want me to cover in watercolors, write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And please do share with your friends and family and uh, good luck to painting folks.